In this segment, I want to teach you on how to think in probabilities, which becomes extremely useful for us as believers if we're going to have consistent outcomes and we really want to have success. Now, thinking in probabilities can be defined as random outcomes with consistent results. I'm going to repeat that. Random outcomes with consistent results. Let me give you uh, a common example of this. Um, a casino thinks in probabilities. For example, let's say you would go to the casino and you would want to play a game of blackjack. On any given hand of blackjack, the outcome of that hand that's being played in that very moment, that outcome is completely random. You might win and you might lose. That's why there's people who go to the casino, they come out and they won. They go another night, they lost. That particular hand, in the very moment that you're playing, that hand has, there's no way to have a, an exact outcome of what will happen in that very moment when the cards are being passed. However, the casino has set in place certain rules for the game that is being played. Now, the rules that the casino placed for that particular game, it sets the advantage very slightly on their side. So what the casino says is this, because they think in probabilities. They say, you know what? Martha is playing on that table. Martha's winning $1,000. But we know that Lucy is on that table. If Martha's winning $1,000, Lucy is going to lose $1,100. Because the odds are on our side. You, on any given hand that you're playing, you can win or lose. But if you stay and you keep playing over and over and over and over and over again, if you're consistently playing, in the end, the probabilities are on the side of the casino. And that's why the casino always wins. They win because they think in probabilities. Let me give it to you like this. Life is like a hand of blackjack. And you, you're like the casino. And God has set the rules in our favor. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans 8 verse 28, and we know that all things work together for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. Listen to me. We live in the now moment, but our faith cannot be in the now moment because what we live every day is random. You might have a good day. You might have a bad day. The, the now moment, what you're living in the very moment, you don't know. This is random. But we must have the knowledge that if we stay consistent with things that God has asked us to do or with a project that we've launched, if we're just consistent, then whether we have good days or bad days, it doesn't stop us from knowing that in the end, the outcome is always positively in our favor. Listen to me. This is where consistency and perseverance become key in our walk with God. Those who are consistent and who persevere, they, you may, may know it or not, you have those character traits because you're someone who thinks in probabilities. Listen, we have to see how we're going to um, assess our life. Most Christians make this terrible mistake. They have a project and they launch it. Or they have a person that they start dating. Or they want to be used in the power of God. And what they do, because they don't think in probabilities, they only think in their very moment. So let's say... God tells them, make this company. And they open the company, and on the first day that the company is open, 
it doesn't go well. They quit. Or some even worse, they say, ah, if God was really in this, it would have worked from day one. They don't understand that even though God gives us something, even though God opens up a door for us, doesn't change the fact that we need to be consistent in what we're doing. It's like when God called Abraham and he sent him into the promised land. So Abraham leaves Ur of the Chaldees. He ends up in the promised land. And the Bible says one chapter later, the Bible says there was a famine in the land. What did Abraham do? Abraham left and he went to Egypt. He got in all kinds of problems in Egypt. What did Abraham do? He repented. He went back into the promised land and he dug wells in the famine and he found water. Why? Because Abraham had to learn that, you know what? Even though I'm in the promised land, there could still be a famine in it. And what I need to do is I need to be consistent in what God is asking me to do. You see, when you have a winning formula, it doesn't mean you're going to win every single time. It just means that you win most of the time. And that's what it takes to succeed. What it takes to succeed is, do you have successful models? If you have a business, do you have a successful business model? If you're in a relationship, do you have a successful way of managing your relationship? That it, it doesn't mean you're never going to argue with your spouse. But it also means that if you do have an argument, it's not a time to start doubting, is the marriage from God or not? Just be consistent. Now, the problem here with believers especially, is that to think in probabilities involves us detaching ourselves from our emotions. Because emotions, they keep you stuck in a moment. So if things are going bad, people who are very emotional, they get stuck in things. It's like, you know, when it doesn't, when it's, when it's not good, it's like they get all grouchy. It's like, <clears throat> they start, you know, they're always pissed off. They're always mad at everybody. They're unhappy. Why? Because they, they're so emotional that they stay stuck in a moment. I'll give you an example. The children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, we discovered that they're very emotional people. I mean, the Bible says that they come out of Egypt and they end up at the Red Sea. And God, mind you, to get them out of Egypt, he released 10 plagues, 10 massive plagues to get them out. And when they left Egypt, they were celebrating. They end up at the Red Sea, and now the Egyptians come up behind them, and what do the Israelites do? They start saying to Moses, Moses, it was better if you would have left us in Egypt. Look now, the Egyptians are here, they're gonna kill us. And they start freaking out. What does Moses do? God speaks to him. Moses opens the Red Sea. The people cross over, and you know the story. Pharaoh tries to follow. He gets sucked up by all the water, and there's a great deliverance. And the Bible says that Miriam, the sister of Aaron, starts to play this song, and two million people, praising God, praising God. Three days later, they don't find any water. What do they do? It would have been better for us to die in Egypt than to die here. We don't have water. What's the problem with these people? Why are they so screwed up? Don't they remember that three days ago they just got a deliverance? It's because they, they, they're not living in probability. Them, they only live the moment. So as soon as something goes wrong, it's the end of the world. And as soon as something is good, they praise God. We, unfortunately, are highly emotional people. So when something goes good, we're praising, we're writing testimonies, we're talking about it with everybody. <laughs> but if it doesn't go good, it's depression time. And this doesn't work in success. It doesn't work in business. It doesn't work in relationship. It certainly does not work in ministry. The only way to succeed in those things, you gotta be consistent. You have to persevere. It means that you have to be thinking in probabilities. You have to say, you know what? If I keep preaching, if I keep praying, if I keep knocking on doors, if I keep taking phone calls, if I keep meeting with new clients, if I just keep grinding, I know that the odds are in my favor. Don't be a close-minded person. Don't be close-minded. You have to accept that you may have bad results for a period and then have good results. You may also say to yourself that there's times that things work for a season and another season they don't work. But you have to say to yourself, do I have a winning formula? Is it God who spoke to me? 
If you have those things, don't stop. Don't stop what you're doing. Why are you stopping? You're stopping because your thinking is flawed. Something bad happened and you quit. And this is the problem with most of us. We don't think in probabilities. Thinking in probabilities means I'm going to just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And I know in the end, I cannot lose. I will see success. I want you to say this with me. I will assume the risk. I will be flexible with my expectation, but I will always remain consistent. I'm going to say that again. I will be flexible with my expectations. Why do you need to be flexible with your expectations? Because maybe you said to yourself, I'm going to make X amount of dollars in one month and this might not happen. So you need to be flexible with what you're expecting. But be inflexible with your consistency. If you have a plan, follow it. Do it. Follow through. Believe. This is this is actually a demonstration of your faith. Your faith is being demonstrated by the fact that you're consistent, consistent regardless of the circumstances. And this is where so many believers fail. They're emotional. They're only consistent when things go well. As soon as things don't go well, they stop completely, completely collapse. And then we say to ourselves, I don't understand why things are not working out for me. Who said that they would be easy Who said that? To be consistent, it means to think with overall success. Living in the now moment, the now moment, which means you're open to anything, you accept the risks, the random outcomes of life are okay. But thinking in probabilities, it, it, it implies faith. Because when we are consistent listen to me here only when you become someone who is consistent is when you can start to have guaranteed results see the problem with people is that they don't they're not consistent so they live in the now moment and they 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 think they're going to always get something good and that's not true the people who have great success don't have it because they're always succeeding they have it because they're always being consistent look at apostle paul for example in the bible he's one of the most successful ministers to ever walk the planet but he went to city after city and he was put in prison he was stoned he was i mean he had persecution he was kicked out of places but he never stopped by the end of his life All the places he had been had churches. He had founded them all. Why? Because he never stopped. He was consistent, regardless of the circumstances that that he lived. So uh, um, this requires a change in our thinking. We have to understand if we are consistent, the odds will always be in our favor. If we are consistent, the odds will always be in our favor. This is why if you're in a relationship, discover the principles that can make that relationship work. Principles of communication. And then if you try to talk to your wife or your husband one time and it doesn't work, try again. Because if you're consistent with the principles, at one point it's going to work. You can be guaranteed that whether it's in your relationship, whether it's in business, whether it's in ministry, regardless of the area, when you think in probabilities and you say, you know what, if I just stay steady, I'm going to see. Don't be one of those people that lives in their emotions. Don't be one of those people that lives in their emotions. Be one of those people that says, you know what? I'm going to think with probabilities. I know that if I can 
just be consistent. God's going to make it work out for me according to his good pleasure. Because Romans 8, 28 tells us, all things work together for the good of those who love God. All things. That means even if it's bad for a bit, I know that with time, all things end up working together. The problem is when we stop, now God has nothing to work together for us because we're doing nothing. God cannot help someone who is inactive. He can't. He can only work things out when we're working. So we must be consistent so that God can work things out in our favor. Bless you.